Hey, it's Eric from AmpAddict.com. Today, we're going to be doing a latch replacement on a 1970-1980s Gibson Les Paul Gen 2 protector case, also known as the chainsaw case. Now, these cases are highly coveted because uh, they're known as the best Gibson Les Paul case to ever exist. Their superior protection uh, is really just uh, unsurpassed over the generations. And because of that, they're really, really expensive. They're really hard to find, really hard to replace. And in my case, I have one from my 1982 Gibson Les Paul Custom, but unfortunately, my rear latch has broken off at some point over time. Now, I ordered the Bennett Music Labs replacement kit off of Reverb.com. For about 20 bucks, you can get a full replacement kit, which includes the replacement latch and lock mechanism, the rivets. Now, it's important to point out that these rivets are actually steel instead of aluminum, which is pretty common. And then we got some retaining washers. Now, Bennett Music Labs does a great job giving you how-to videos on how to replace these front latches. But at Amp Attic, we believe that there's just a couple of additional nuances that you need to consider when you're replacing this back latch, like on my 1982 Gibson Les Paul Customs case. So, you're gonna need some tools. Now, if you're handy, you probably have most of these tools laying around. If you're not, go to Amazon and, and just order yourself, you know, the proper tools that you need in order to get this done. Honestly, you don't need to bring this to a shop. You can get this done yourself, and hopefully, you have most of the tools laying around that you need to accomplish this. Today, I'm going to show you the replacement. I'm pretty handy. Uh, however, I've not approached this uh, project myself before, so you'll be seeing it for the first time as if I'm going through it for the first time. The tools that I brought uh, in order to accomplish this, pop rivet gun, small Phillips head screwdriver, a power drill, two drill bits, 5 30 seconds and 3 30 seconds in size, and wire cutters. What you don't see is a Dremel with a sanding bit. I'll be doing that out in my garage instead of uh, in the attic here. Uh, so what's up next is I'll give you a close-up of the actual replacement as I'm doing the work. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill out the old rivets. Now, this uh, lock mechanism here is what's broken, but the retaining or the, the, the actual piece that the lock goes over uh, is, is actually good. So there's no need to replace this. So I'm going to really just be looking at replacing the, the piece that folds over and locks the locking mechanism in place. So stay tuned, I'm gonna move the camera around so you can see uh, a little bit better here. And like I said, you're gonna be watching uh, step by step as if I'm going through this process for the first time. There's gonna be a couple nuances that you really need to know, and that's gonna be in the interior of the case that I'm gonna show you up next. Thanks, and stay tuned. Okay, so step one here is we're going to grab our Phillips screwdriver and we're going to remove uh, the accessories tray here or just, you know, get it out of the way so we can get to the rivets. Now, you're going to open this up here and you'll notice you pull down your carpet, you'll see you get access to one of the rivets here. But unfortunately, the other rivet is behind this kind of blocker here that holds the accessory tray together that you put your picks and stuff in. Um, luckily, it's easy to get this thing out of here. Uh, there's just one Phillips screw that you have to remove, and then this can just ultimately just be pulled up just a little bit. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. Uh, so what I do is I just kind of take this screw right out, like this here. Now, the good news is I just drop it right in the accessory tray. Now, um, you might have some glue that's kind of holding everything together here. Uh, over the years, that glue should have broken down enough for you to pull this right out. If not, you'll feel a little resistance, but the good news is, is anything that kind of folds down like this, um, you have some airplane glue, model glue, um, or anything like that, uh, super glue, um, you just kind of glue all of that back together and everything will look stock and how it originally did when it came from the factory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my fingers underneath this accessories tray and I'm going to pull up. This whole mechanism from here over pops up and it's threaded into the case. It actually has a track that belongs, uh, it belongs to and as you pull up, it's going to pull it out of that track. And once you get it free, you'll notice that everything kind of moves around freely here. And you don't have to go crazy and get this whole thing out. You just really want to get it loose enough that you see that rivet. So when you drill through it, you're not drilling through any of you know, your accessory tray or anything else that's in here. You can even pull it back if you want. And in this case, I have just to make sure I protect that accessory tray so I can get fully to that rivet. Up next, I'm going to flip the case around and show you actually removing these two rivets out. 
of the case and getting ready to new, do new pop rivets. Okay, here we're gonna actually take the rivets out. We're gonna start with the 3 seconds drill bit and just drill this out. All right, here we're just gonna use the larger drill bit to pop the rivets out. All right, so now we're just gonna rivet these little guys right on. So, I'm using this um, lined up in the hole, retaining washer. Looks like both of those pop rivets took and they're secure. So, what we should have to do now is cut them off and we're good to go. Okay, once your latch is now fully secure to the case, you want to flip it around and now put together uh, all of the components in the accessory pocket. Now, the only thing I wanted to point out that's special about this particular area is just how this whole thing gets mounted back in. There's actually a track that it belongs in when you push it in. So you don't want to just go willy-nilly here. You really want to make sure that you get it in uh, the track where it's supposed to go. And you'll know when you have it in that track because what will end up happening is the whole mechanism evenly will actually slide down and seem like it's in place exactly where it's supposed to go. If you have an odd fit or something just seems completely out of place, Definitely double check all of your work to make sure uh, you've done everything the way it's supposed to be because it should slide down in a track, sit flush, so when you close the case, the whole case closes uh, just as it should. Now, you want to replace that Phillips head screw uh, that we took out, um, and, and that's basically it. Um, follow the, the rest of the instructions that are on Bennett Music Lab's website as far as um, you know, uh, filing these down and making sure they're nice and clean so you don't really see them or feel them when you're you know, utilizing the case. Uh, in this case here, where we have the rear latch, it, you know, it's less of a worry of damaging the guitar, but you can definitely feel those rivets uh, within you know, the fur of the actual case, so you want to make sure um, you get those filed down properly uh, so that way you 
you don't feel it as much uh, and it's protecting whatever you decide to store in the accessory compartment. So uh, again, this is Eric from ampaddict.com. I hope you enjoyed our video. Definitely check us out on Reverb as well as www.ampaddict.com. Take care.